Hi, this is Zach with Warner Wound. Today we're we'll taking a look at the Autodromo Group B watches. Uh, this newest offering from the brand is perhaps the most striking that they have uh, created. Uh, drawing on the Group B rally cars from the 1980s, uh, which were notoriously dangerous and high-powered rally cars. This uh, series of watches, I believe, have a, have a design that's, that's much more striking than, uh, than, frankly, anything else out on the market right now. They really draw on the, this, this 80s aesthetic. Um, and while referencing the Group B era, um, which was known for being very light and very powerful, but also very dangerous. These watches just have this overall sort of 80s feel to them, um, classic sport watch feel to them as well. And they're just uh, really unlike anything that is currently available. And uh, for you know the right person, just an exceptionally beautiful watch. I find them uh, incredibly appealing. We'll go through all the different features of them, the different design elements. Um, you know, one of the things with the Auto Dromo that really sets them apart is um, you know, they're, they're an affordable watch brand. Their watches are, are under $1,000, but they uh, really focus on, on design, aesthetic, finishing, and uh, in this case, I think a lot more kind of ingenuity as well. So what you'll see in this watch is a use of different materials, really excellent finishing around, really clever, just little design tricks here and there. Um, a case design that, uh, as you might already see, utilizes uh, exclusively pass-through straps, which, um, while a bold move, creates just like a, a, a conceptual design that is just really kind of unique to what Auto, uh, Autodromo is doing and what Autodromo is about. So the watch here, the Group E, comes in four different colors. It's a mix of stainless steel and titanium um, and is powered by Miyota 9015. Here you have the white version, uh, the blue version, the red version, and the yellow or orange version. Uh, and let's take a closer look. The case of the Autodromo Group Bs is a really uh, striking and, uh, and gorgeous design, in my opinion. Uh, one of the things about Autodromo, um, and you can see this across all of his watches, is the focus on, on case design, case finishing, and engineering, and all these things. I mean, there's, um, I believe, a lot more goes into his case design than uh, most brands working in this price bracket. And while, um, you know, occasionally people might say, oh, they're a bit pricier for a watch with, you know, a 9015 movement in it, that price is absolutely going into the quality of these cases and the design behind them. So um, if you're a case fan, and you're into finishing, um, these watches are just gonna really, really appeal to you. So looking at the design, uh, it's a 39 millimeter case, which is a great size. Also just great to see something uh, sub 40 again. Uh, it's 50 millimeters edge to edge. Uh, you could call that lug to lug, but there aren't actually spring bars in this, which I'll show you in a minute. But so from edge to edge, it is uh, 50.4 millimeters. And then in height, it's actually only 10.3 uh, millimeters or thereabouts. And that's to the top of this very, very tall sapphire crystal. So that's actually one exceptional thing about this watch. He got it really, really thin. As you can see here, just looking at the side, how thin the central case is. The movement is really kind of uh, cleverly sitting behind the central case and sort of in the case back. So what he gets is just this really uh, exceptional thin watch. And that speaks to the concept of the Group B cars. You know, like I said, they were, they were, they were all about uh, lightness and, and power. So, you know, the idea of there being less material really kind of fill, kind of plays with that concept. And it's a very subtle way of bringing in, you know, it's really kind of a, an inspiration for the design rather than being, you know, like an obvious reference. The actual uh, design of the case uh, really speaks to 70s and 80s uh, sport watches. There's definitely a bit of a Genta feel to, uh, to the shape of the case, but there's also, they do, it does really speak once again to the uh, inspiration of the, uh, the Group B rally cars because those were very harsh, they were very square, they were very angular, they were very flat in certain places, they weren't these swoopy sports cars. Um, and you can see here, you know, there's these kind of brutal sharp lines and changes. I mean, they were, he did a really good job of taking those and turning those into an overall elegant design, but you still have those flat, sharp facets, those harsh changes, um, cool little things like the tool marks here on the bezel, which, um, I just, I mean, I love that little design element, but they, you know, it's very uh, industrial feeling. It's very technical feeling. Um, and now, you know, just getting into, you know, what I think is so strong about these watches, the finishing. When you, when you look at 
uh, these different surfaces, you know, sharp lines like this are, are beautiful. The top surface that's under the bezel here is all brushed in one direction. The bezel, now actually also just to get into there's two different materials here. So the central case here is steel. The bezel is titanium and the case back is titanium. This was once again to reduce weight, but also just play with that concept of kind of innovative use of materials, doing something a little bit more technical. And then there's actually titanium inside the watch. I can't show you, but the movement holder is titanium. Once again, further reducing the weight of this watch. And it is a, a very, you know, it's a noticeably light uh, watch. Um, so anyway, so you have this mix of materials and then on the, this bezel here on the top surface of the bezel, it is brushed also in the same direction and it's perfectly matching. So it's not, you know, there's a, there would be a potential for it to be a tiny bit off, but it's not. It perfectly matches the direction. So you get this really nice flow, but then the edge of the bezel is uh, matte bead blasted. So you get a little bit of that darker titanium gray coming through. And then looking at the edge here of the steel case, it is beveled all the way around and polished. So you have this beautiful little line of polish that kind of runs the whole way around. And amazingly, it's also on the case back. So, I mean, how often do you see that, that the case back has kind of beveling and polishing? So that beveled line runs all the way up, runs over these crazy lug design here, um, which are also brushed on the back. I mean, this is like, this is a level of consideration that, you know, you just don't see very often. And I think it, it just plays into this watch being, you know, so beautiful, it's such a nice piece to see and hold. Um, and the crown here at three, it's kind of a, a, uh, a small hexagonal crown. It has flat surfaces on it. Once again, though, it's very treated very, very nicely. So each of those edges is uh, rounded as it approaches each other. So you get this really nice just form. Um, you know, it's just, it's just a level of, once again, detail and care that is great to see. There's a little Autodromo logo in the side there. Um, now to get into kind of the most divisive uh, uh, element of the design and, you know, something that I think might uh, you know, it might appeal to some people, it might also turn some people away, is that there are no spring bars to this watch. The, the way the watch works is that these uh, lugs here are slots and the straps, as you can see, pass straight through them. So you can't use a traditional two piece strap. You'd have to use, you know, various nylon straps, thinner uh, leather pass through straps, things like that. But once again, this just all goes to this concept. And I, you know, I appreciate seeing the designer really stick to the concept to get across um, something very unique. And, um, you know, I think it, it achieves that very, very well. And it's also still just beautifully executed, even in this, you know, just a, this simple slot here. So when you look down the case, you'll notice that this actually tapers ever so slightly. So things are just never quite as simple as they appear, but it builds into this kind of really uh, beautiful uh, form. And actually one of my favorite angles is when you look at the watch without a, uh, a strap on it from the, the side here, which might be a little bit hard to see. You see these angles come in on the side, then there's a flat plane, and then you hit the bezel angle, which comes in too. Then there's a little bit of a flat plane, and then the crystal, finally, with this beautiful tall crystal, has this great chamfer around the edge that then once again brings in. And so you have this kind of stepped pyramid design, which has you know, it's very 80s to me. It kind of reminds me of almost like something like the sets of, uh, of, of um, uh, Blade Runner or something like that. There's like a harsh kind of futuristic 80s feel to it. It's just very cool. I really like that uh, aspect to it. Uh, quickly looking at the case back, all titanium case back. Um, very simple, very elegant. Obviously, this will be underneath. This will be hidden by a strap most of the time, so they kept it very simple, but I think there's still a very nice kind of graphic feel to this with the thin text going around and the little Autodromo logo in the center. And you can see, and this is one thing also with most of his watches, is that he does get to do case backs that kind of bow out a little bit. And here, I do believe it is used partially to contain the rotor as well. But so this whole surface is 100% smooth and it's arching up ever so slightly, being domed this whole way. So it feels very uh, soft and very nice. And I believe that, you know, probably as that is pushing into to the strap and against your skin, it's gonna make for a more comfortable watch to wear. The dial of the Autodromo Group B uh, is, is very interesting. It's a very striking dial once again. I mean, keeping with the theme, there's something uh, um, very 80s about it, very kind of in your face, but at the same time tuned very well. So it's, uh, it's in my opinion, actually a very beautiful dial. Um, I like the use of, of the simple use of a, a single color and then black 
Um, and what's really nice about the, the design of it, something that you really get to appreciate once you see it in person, is that it's not just flat. There's a really actually quite a bit going on here in surface changes, um, in uh, depth and little textures to create um, uh, a much more kind of rich uh, experience than you might think at a glance. Like at a glance, it might just seem like color on a black uh, background, but it really, there's a lot more going on. So looking at this primary index here, which is this, you know, ring of, of lines, you have um, bolder lines at, at intervals of five, you know, for the hour, and then thinner lines in between them for the individual minutes or seconds. The bolder lines um, are actually raised up a little bit, which you might not realize at first glance. So they have, uh, on top of being a little bit thicker, they do have a little bit of texture to them, which uh, is very noticeable in person. And I, once again, a really nice little detail. And then there's this center area uh, here in the middle of the dial, which is actually, once again, raised up, has a little bit of a chamfer going around the edge. So you get a little bit of a glint of light along it, which is uh, very, very attractive. Um, it has this nice, almost satin, sheen to it. It's not quite matte. It's like a little bit different. I, I uh, really like the way it looks. You have the Autodromo logo at 12, Group B in the uh, kind of interesting Group B font here. Once again, a very kind of bold font that he's developed to, uh, you know, speak to the, to the time. And then automatic underneath that. The, the typeface here is like incredibly small, so everything is really subdued. It does not call out to you too much. Even the, the Group B uh, font, which is, you know, clearly a much more kind of a uh, impactful, it's going to pull your eye in. It's still very, very small. So you don't get distracted by that stuff at all. Um, over here on the center of the dial next to, you know, coming at three and nine are kind of the Autodromo signature screw heads. These have been on every dial in one way or another. I like the execution here a lot. They're flat, but they're a different material. So they are, they're black, but they're, they're like a, a, a gloss black. So they have a little bit of a pick up the light just uh, ever so slightly, which is just once again a nice detail, a nice little shift in the uh, coloration there. Uh, looking at the outer edge of this chapter ring, this obviously contains numerals at intervals of five, once again matching the color um, within. Uh, one thing that was no I, that really I liked about this that I didn't notice honestly until I was really kind of looking very closely in is that that whole ring is actually textured. So there are little lines going up at, that are you know kind of circular graining going um, up the chapter ring, and that gives it a slightly different sheen as well. Um, one really interesting thing about that is actually how it responds to the chamfer in the crystal here. Um, the crystal does distort that, but it, what, what it does is it kind of brings the numbers out to you almost a little bit. So it's, a, it's actually a very cool effect, one that looks really, really nice on the wrist. Looking at the hands now, Really, uh, you know, interesting hands, clearly uniquely designed just for uh, uh, this concept. So you have the hour and minute hand here. The minute hand is, is this very uh, long, bold, solid uh, color. Um, it, you know, it obviously has a bit of a, the feel of like a, of a needle and a, and, a, and a tachometer or something, or a tachometer rather. Um, and then the hour hand here is skeletonized. Uh, so you have this, this nice play between the two. You're obviously never going to mix them up. They're very, very different from each other. And they work really nicely with kind of where they land on the dial. So the hour just runs on the inner edge of that circle, whereas the minute goes all the way out to the edge of those lines. So that, uh, you know, just once again, it kind of has a really good at a glance legibility. Then you have a second hand here that is uh, a shorter second hand, runs once again to the edge of that inner dial and is colored just towards the tip, so it has almost a kind of a floating feel to it. So there really isn't any uh, negative interaction between them at all. It's very legible. I have seen people say, like at a glance, oh, it looks like a GMT because the minute hand comes all the way through. But honestly, in person, you'll never think that. You'd never you know, misinterpret the back end of that minute hand uh, for you know, a pointer at all. Um, one cool thing that you might not notice uh, initially is that actually in the very center of the dial is a black uh, disc and that's kind of it's covering that central axis kind of giving it a little bit more of a look once again from like a, a dash and that black disc is actually uh, uh, printed in some fashion on the crystal itself so it's floating above the dial which in person has a nice effect you can see that it's not quite there and kind of gives a little bit of, of, of more depth to the dial uh, now I'll show you uh, the individual colors 
the group B comes in four very distinct colors, um, each kind of, I, I, which I, I think is a really cool idea, I should say, first off, because um, they all work with the concept, they all have these kind of uh, a bright sort of fluorescent sort of 80s feel to them. There's almost like a neon-ish kind of, of sensibility to it. Um, but it's, you know, each one is going to appeal to certain people. And, uh, you know, I just think it's a smart to give a few different options with a white option that'll um, kind of be the most neutral. But so here, obviously, you have blue. It's uh, a really nice electric blue. Uh, I, I think this one um, is very appealing. I like the core, how the, the blue and the orange secondhand correspond to each other. Um, this one, uh, it's, it's maybe almost, it's almost a little subdued. There's something kind of, uh, it's less you know, loud than a, than, a, than a bright color. The brighter colors, which I'll show you, um, just because blue being cool kind of recedes. Um, but yeah, it's a really gorgeous color. Uh, now looking at uh, the red, um, this one's quite uh, striking too. It's a little bit, you know, more aggressive looking um, in red, I, I think. But uh, one thing that I did note about this one um, is that the red is a little bit different than you'd expect. So if you were to look at the the images on the website, it almost looks like a darker red. But here, to my eye, it comes out a little bit brighter, a little bit lighter of a red with the hands um, approaching a pink, but not quite a pink. But um, so it's just not quite the color you expect, but it is a very attractive color and kind of, you know, it's funny. It's, it's, it's like the blue, it pops out at you, but at the same time, there is something almost uh, dark about the whole thing, which is cool. Um, now looking at maybe my personal favorite of the group, uh, the yellow. Um, once again, the yellow is a little bit different than um, what it seems like it'll be on the on the website. It, to my eyes, is a little bit more of a burnt orange rather than kind of a lemon yellow or a canary yellow. And it really jumps out of the dial. It's really quite shocking, especially that Minahan. It really jumps out. And I usually like things that are more minimal, more subdued, but this just, I just found this so appealing. I found that how it worked with the concept of, of, of being, you know, having all these, these kind of harsh angles, kind of technical angles, but then this kind of pop of color was really um, kind of exciting. And when it kind of, you know, I'd look at it and the edge would come out underneath my shirt sleeve, I love the way the orange just really uh, jumped out there. So this one I just personally found very, very appealing. I, mean, I find them all appealing, but this one really spoke to me. Uh, lastly, show you the, the kind of the classic white dial. Um, now this one actually has a slight, slight green tint to it, which is because of the loom. Um, and this one, I mean, it's, it's beautiful as well. I think you can go wrong if, you know, you're not into color and you want to go with something a little bit more, um, almost classic, if you will. I mean, it does, still does, it's still a very striking look. Um, the slight green tint I actually really uh, like as well. And uh, the loom on these watches is surprisingly excellent. Um, Almost everything glows. Basically, all those lines glow. The hands glow. The, I mean, the minute hand, the hour hand glow. And actually, the little group B logo glows. And it, the white one glows the best by far, um, then followed by the blue. And then the orange and the red are the, uh, uh, the least glowing, if you will. But they all glow way better than you'd uh, expect. But this one really is quite, uh, quite bright. And it looks really, really cool in the dark. On the wrist, the Group Bs wear extremely well. Um, here, I obviously have the blue model on. Uh, the 39 millimeter case by 50 millimeter, 50.4 millimeter, uh, end to end fits very nicely. It's you know, it, it's a it's a great size for a, a, for a sport watch or any watch. I mean, this is you know, when you see watches that are are under 40. Um, size appropriately in proportion, you realize just like how well they work out. Um, and while this watch is actually, I guess, you know, a bit longer, perhaps even from edge to edge than some watches uh, this length, this width rather, um, the way it feels is almost like it stops here at this line because then it drops down your wrist. So it fits very nicely. Uh, I have a seven inch wrist here, so I've got a medium wrist. I think this is pretty perfect. I think it would fit smaller and larger wrist, wrists as well. Um, it's like I said, it's very thin, so it wears very comfortably. It's very light because of the, the mix of materials here <clears throat> and the overall size. So um, it's it's the kind of watch you can put on and almost forget that you're wearing, um, which is great <clears throat> for a mechanical watch, for a watch you know a sport watch that you know are often bulkier than dress watches or 
Uh, but this just, and it just looks so awesome. I mean, I, I am a fan of vintage watches. I particularly do like barrel cases. I like, you know, so this one does really appeal to me. Um, but the, I think the aesthetic is just so spot on and so unexpected, you know, like if I were to imagine in my mind a watch that I would want, I mean, the idea of something with a bright, you know, a single bright color on black and then very harsh lines might not be the, what I'd imagine, but then when you try it on, you see it in person, it just fits and wears so well. Um, and it gets you some of that 70s, 80s sports, uh, luxury kind of sport watch um, look and feel without, you know, going obviously into a five figure dollar watch um, area. And you get these, you know, you see these, these, these great little polished lines. The finishing really comes out in person when you're walking around, when you see it in various lighting. Um, it's, it's a gorgeous watch and, you know, all those little details add up to make something that is very, very appealing in person. Uh, the watches each come with two pass-through straps. Um, they're 20 millimeters in width. They're made out of nylon. Um, each one comes with a strap that matches the color concept, so obviously blue and blue. And then they also come with kind of a neutral gray, which I'll show you in a second. Um, I personally would more, more likely wear something on the neutral gray than on the color, just because it's just a little bit too much color for me. But I do like that it comes with that option. I can see some people really um, obviously finding that appealing because it really makes the dial color pop. Um, some of the colors match a little bit better than others. I mean, this blue really works very well. The yellow, in my opinion, is a little bit, it's a little bit of, a, of a contrast between the dial yellow and the, and the nylon yellow. But um, once again, you do get a lot of color from that. One of the really cool things, though, about the nylon is actually the buckles that they made. These are custom designed buckles. Um, they're really cool, you know, they're double sided, so it actually works as a keeper as well. Um, looking at it actually here on a, this other strap, um, it, it's, it's, it's very nicely finished, it's brushing all around, it has an Autodromo logo, um, it has a nice little curve to it. It's just like, it's one of the cooler buckles I think that um, I've seen on a watch recently, and you know, it's just put on a single, you know, a pass through nylon strap. So. I just love that, once again, the attention to detail to make the, the whole much more uh, congruent. Um, now, once again, once again, I said this. So this is the other strap that it comes on, uh, comes with this neutral gray. Um, I really like that, that kind of color. And just looking at the detailing of the strap, so it seems, you know, it's a simple single pass, but it actually has this auto dromo uh, logo uh, stitched into it, um, which, you know, is speaks to uh, seat belts and kind of the way like, you know, branding uh, works on vehicles. And it's a cool little detail. And one thing you can actually do is reverse the buckle, just held in by a spring bar, so it's really easy. Um, and then wear this on the outside if you wanted to. Um, it's a cool look, you know, I mean, if you want to kind of, you know, fly the flag of Autodromo a little bit more, it is something you can do. One of the cool things about Autodroma watches that uh, I've really always liked is their effort put into the packaging. Um, they, you know, create these these kind of uh, conceptual bundles that um, make the watches themselves kind of more fun to collect, more fun to own, um, and certainly it's packaging you'll want to keep. Um, so looking at the Group B package, they went in a very different direction from what they, they've typically done. Um, starting, this is actually the outer sleeve of the packaging. You have this very bold graphic, um, very 80s kind of vector graphic look. It's very cool, very fun, a little Tron feeling. I love that. Um, taking it off now, you'll see that the actual packaging here is all aluminum. Um, and it's, it's I, I believe, actually hand formed, it's cut and then hand formed to be in this, this uh, you know, dimension. It's just really beautiful. I mean, this is something you'd imagine a, an expensive pen set to come in. It obviously, it has an expensive watch in it, so it's uh, totally appropriate. And I love this little, you know, the detail here, with this piece being mounted on. And you just open it up, you simply pop it. It opens quite easily. And there's a little foam insert here to keep everything pressure and safe. Um, the first thing you'll see is this uh, really cool uh, instruction manual here. There's great bold graphic on it. Um, pulling that out, you get to the watch. And this is how the watch is presented to you. And this is really, really cool. You know, I, I, presentation is something that is, is often overlooked. You just open a box, you get the watch on a pillow, whatever. You've seen that a million times. Here you have the watch um, in its various components disassembled, which um, 
is just cool. It's very, it's a, you know, it's like a conceptual little thing. Now, as as, as a, somebody who just bought this watch, you have to then remove the watch from the packaging, pick out your strap, put it on there. And I just really like the kind of like the final bit of assembly is up to you, the user. That's a really nice um, touch. It's going to kind of immediately get you uh, interacting with the watch in a way that you know I think other watches uh, you might not. To wrap up, the Autodromo Group B watches are another exceptional offering from the brand. You know, I think he actually uh, really hit it out of the park with this design. Definitely the most daring the brand has done, and I think it uh, shows a lot of, of the kind of watch craft and, and, and ability that the brand has also developed in the few years that they have been around. Because this watch, you know, on top of being conceptually interesting, graphically interesting, having nice finishing, you know, there's a little bit more going on with materials and everything. And uh, just to make a watch that's, that's unique, it's exciting, it's, 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 it's gorgeous, and it's, you know, unlike any other watch um, out there right now. And I think, you know, perhaps more so than these other watches, um, you know, you don't have to necessarily know or be into the automotive history behind the concept of Group B to appreciate these. You know, for me personally, I like cars and everything, but I don't know that much about the, you know, what's going on in racing or the history of it. What I see here that I really appeals to me is this kind of 80s aesthetic. You know, I, I, I love the, the look of, you know, like I mentioned, a film like Blade Runner, a film like Aliens, which had this concept of a future where uh, technology was still very harsh and blunt. It wasn't um, this kind of overly uh, uh, smoothed out and organic feel. You know, things were still kind of, uh, uh, you know, brutal and had this 70s, 80s kind of Italian feel to it. And to me, that uh, is just a great aesthetic, something that I personally find very enjoyable, something that I personally could wear and uh, I think looks great. So once again, the Autodroma Group B watches, $925, um, absolutely worth it, really exceptional timepieces. Uh, please read the full review on Worn and Wound. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you.